Look at this. Yeah, I got it a ship. She's a beaut. Yeah, you like it? It's America with Bushy. She is a beautiful ship. And I want to build this one because, you know, I cannot do this accident. I don't know what's happened. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Yes. <laughs> We're supposed to be Italian, but I think it turned into sort of a French person. <laughs> I don't know. My accents get all mixed up. I've been a bit crook and my voice is a bit croaky, but I thought I'd show you this because I often do a fun build around Christmas, New Year. And I sort of had plans to do a mosquito, but I've got reasons I just don't feel like doing that. But I've had this in the stash for a while, and it's kind of fun. I built another one to this scale by Lee, which is a rebox of the um, Aoshima kit, which in itself is the rebox of the MA kit, and that is of the Nippon Maru. There's a whole video on that. You can see how I put that together. I had a ball. Anyhow, what I want to do this year is I'm going to build this one. I hope I'm pronouncing that correct. Amerigo Vespucci. It sort of seems like it should be like have an H in it. Or is it a Vespucci? I don't know. If you know how to say this properly, let me know and I'll be less embarrassed in my future videos. Like, I even get embarrassed. <laughs> okay, so would you like to see inside this box? Because this is a very interesting kit. You would? Great. Roll the music. <laughs> Now the great thing about this sailing ship, which doesn't happen with just about everything else that I build when well, sailing ships, this one's still around, at least I believe it is. Uh, Keel was laid down in 1930 and she went to sea, she was launched in 1931 and she's been around in one form or another for all that time, so that's 90 years. It's amazing. So um, a few things have changed. She's got some steam power in her now, although she might have had that when she was launched. I don't know. Better check that. But she is steam driven as well as sail driven. So she's from that period with that kind of doing a bit of both, which is kind of typical in the 1930s, I suppose. She's a training ship now and um, look huge. If you compare it to the Bounty, right? The Bounty kit that I built was 1110. But the Bounty was only 28 metres long in real life. This is 100 metres long. This is a big ship. The Bounty is only 7 metres wide. This is 15 metres across the beam, right? Now, admittedly, the 100 metre measurement that they quote, I can find, includes the bowsprit, right? Includes the bowsprit. So you take that out, she's probably about 80 metres long. But anyhow, the, even if the Bounty, like usually when you talk about a ship's length, it's the hull. You don't usually include the bowsprit because ships at least in the older days, they could be rigged various ways. And this was a thing. Ships used to be called barks, you know, cutters, um, whatever, okay, schooners, whatever. And it was the shape of the hull. And you could rig them however you liked. So a bark could have one mast, two masts, three masts, didn't matter. Then everything sort of changed around the 18th, 19th century. And they started referring to ships by name as per their rigging. So it really didn't matter too much about the hull. You would have, a bark would have, you know, one mast. A single bark would, one mast, square sails, and then basically four half sails, and a two-masted bark, and a schooner has got this and that. Four. And this is the thing. They will change. But anyhow, if you want to know more about that, look it up. It's on that interweb thing. It's quite fascinating. But anyhow, in the old days, they measured the ship's length just by the hull. That's all they're interested in. How long and how big is your hull? How fast does it go? All right. We'll decide what kind of sails we're going to put on it. And you could change them. Now, the Bounty has three masts. This has three masts. But the Bounty only has three sails, three sails, and two sails here, right? Okay. They both have the spanker. All right. But this has got four sails, five sails, five sails. Sort of, see, this thing is huge. So even though this is a 1350 scale kit, this thing is nearly a foot long for the kit. And the Bounty... Well, the bounty hull was about that size. So, although this is a 1350 scale kit, it's nearly as big as that bounty that I built. Yeah. I know a lot of you thought that bounty was really huge, but it wasn't. At 1110 scale, the bounty is only a 28 metre long ship. She's not that big. Okay, well, let's have a look inside the box. Top opening box. Bit of nice um, box out there showing you the kit. And there's some actual photos of the real ship. And you can find plenty of photos online of the ship. So references are you know, so easy to find. And that makes it very easy to get the colours right. And, you know, get the rigging right. And basically get it correct. If you want it correct. 
I'm basically going to build this out of the box. I won't be scratch for This is just one of those fun little builds. Now, this was in here. It was kind of holding everything down. But when I put it back in, I couldn't have figured out where he went, the mate. Right. So I'm going to remove that. But you don't get much. <laughs> you don't get much in there. Here's your instructions, right? Okay. Are you ready? That's it. That is it. That is the entire build. You, know, you can build this thing, like, you know, in a couple of days. By the end of a week, you'll have it built and painted. That's no problem. Uh, what happens is... You get slowed down a bit when you get to the rigging, okay? So um, there's a bit of rigging, and I'll do quite a bit on this. I won't put, oh, I don't know if I'll put sails on. I don't really like them with sails. I always like the look, the, um, you know, the look without sails so you can see all the rigging. But we'll see. I might put sails on this one. But I don't know if I like plastic sails. You get a wonderful painting guide. It is really quite lovely. They keep going for this orange. They did this on the um, Nippon Maru, this orange thing here. But I will check all the reference photos because orange doesn't seem correct to me. I'll, um, I'll look all that up. And they've got a rather ghastly sort of you know, dirty green colour of the deck. I'll, I'll look that up as well. Some people paint the bottom of the hull white. But generally speaking, it's considered it to be black. It will have a screw. Yep. Because this has a motor. And it has a bridge forward. Okay. Oh, it also has a little house at the back there so it's quite good i'll look all that up i'll research everything and i'll be as true as i can to the actual colors because this is a lovely little italian ship so we've got that as you can see this is quite old quite dirty the sails yeah well i wouldn't use those <laughs> forget it <laughs> it's just junk i wouldn't use that sort of thing now as i said there's the hull now admittedly the bounty hull was probably about that long <laughs> so it was a little bit longer um uh, so you know but even though so it's going to be a good size model this will be bigger than that nippon maru so uh i'll do a size comparison when i build now they they make these so they're waterline which is rather nice so you can just build this straight away pop it on a diarrhea a rama a re a drop on a seascape and um you're away you can make it look um you know really lovely so that's always a possibility but if you do a seascape you need sails i saw this guy who did the um the St. Louis, the one I'm building. He did this fantastic seascape and everything there, and he had no sails. No sails on a sailing ship that had no other propulsion by the sails. So, and he even had sort of keeled over and there were big waves and everything. Hmm, big storm, rip it along, no sails. You're going to be on the rocks, mate. <laughs> You've got nothing but your rudder to steer you. You get a little bit of glue and you get the horrible orange rigging line. I kind of used it. Well, actually, it's not bad. It doesn't fray. You don't have to wax it. But it's just the wrong colour. But I, I could repaint it, I suppose. The hull sides will just... I'll get all these packets open in a sec. There's your hull. You get a little stand. Uh, this is the bottom of the hull, right? Bottom of the hull. So that will still be black. They're designed so you can pretty well build them without painting. And with a nip on maroon, because a lot of things were the colour as supplied, I didn't paint them. Horror, horror. I just put a bit of, you know, matte clear on there. And it just looked like everything else. That's all you're through. So how about I now cut into this and we'll see what you get for your bucks. So there's the entire kit. There's really not a lot to it. Now in this little packet here, you have to get all the string and you get the bit of glue. But you also get, and I used them last time, they were rather nice. You get the little flags. So you've got a few flags there. And oops, don't get stuck to that, Harry. You have got the lovely gilding for the stern which I used on my nipple maru as well. And that came up really well. Oh, what have we got here? Two sets of flags. Okay. So um, you can do it to us. Yeah. Okay, so those are other nice. And I'll put that safely away. I've got cordage, so I won't use that orange. I sort of did on the, the nipple, only because I had it. And I went, oh, what the heck. Now, um, yeah, the hull. The hull is actually... Got the planks scribed there. But I'm wondering if I could use some of my 1150 scale planks that I have and then actually use a very sharp knife to get these are the laminated ones, right? The stick on laminated ones and cut them down so that I actually have planks that would be the correct width for this. I'll sort of have a think about that because they're kind of tiny. I'll be working in like tiny millimeter strips. So, um, yeah, I think I've got one millimetre planks, which will go down to half a millimetre. Mm, might not be big enough. But still, you can get a wood deck for the Nippon Maru, amazingly. Artworks do one. So you put that on. But this ship, no. 
Nipple Moreau is much narrower in the beam than this, um, but it was quite a long ship. The um, portholes are all nicely sort of recessed. I will draw those out. Are you getting any of this? Because I mean, it's black on black on black with a black background. It's like that bloody June movie that I watched, yeah. So all the portholes are there. You've got the, the lines there to paint the white. Now, usually what you do is you don't try and paint white and mask it. Usually you paint all of this white and then you put a bit of tape the correct width and you run the tape along there. So you've got a nice straight piece of tape and then you paint the whole thing black again. And then when you pull the tape off, of course, you're left with white stripes. I'll show all that when I build it. That's a, that's a trick. Often you do things back to front. And it sort of seems silly that you take something that's black, paint it white, and then paint it black again. But it works! <laughs> Believe me. The hull halves... Uh, there's just nothing to them. It's just they're boring as bad shit. Uh, so we might add some detail to them. I might get my null tape out and see if we can't, you know, add at least some panel lines sort of thing. Because, you know, these are all made up of panels. And I think this, this would have been a steel hull. Well, 1930s, it would have been a metal ship. So, yeah. You know, the rudder there is a cute little rudder. Your screws, yeah, they're um, they're awful. <laughs> they're absolutely dreadful. Um, they're as thick as anything. They're like tree trunk thickness. And um, are they angled? Are the veins angled? Oh, they are slightly. They might sand down. They might sand down to a reasonable size. But they are um, they're quite horrible. <laughs> you do get a rather nice sort of pedestal. It's plastic. But the colouring on it, the brass colouring, is quite good. It'll be the same as when I have the nipple on maroon. And the base, well, it's sort of a funny wood colour, but staying that up a bit, it'll look quite good. Run some of my wood effects on. The trick is, though, to glue the base, the pedestals, to the base and fix them securely to your boat. Because I didn't do that with the uh, nipple on I had it still as waterline and dry fit to the hull. The hull was dry fit to the pedestals. Pedestals were dry fit to the base, right? You get anything? And one day a big gust of wind when I opened up the cabinet to do something. A big gust of wind came through and the nipple and bro lifted into the air, flew out and landed bow first into the floor. Oops. And yeah, I had to do quite a bit of swearing. <laughs> no, it, um, it did get fixed up, but I hadn't taken it into the competition yet. I went, after I sort of snapped the bow and had to glue it all back together with CA glue and try and get the ring happening, I, I thought, ah, oh, look, you know, it's not, it's not good enough now for competition. Now... That leaves us with just three sprues for everything else. So um, just like the Nipple Maru, you get all the deck pieces and they are rather nicely moulded. So, yeah, it's probably not even worth trying to put wood on there like wood veneer. You also got to work your way around all the greebles. So I had no problem actually painting, staining and getting a wood effect on the deck of the, uh, the Nipple Maru. So I think I should be able to do it for this one as well. That was a lot of fun. But again, what you would do is... To get the same colours, you paint that white. So essentially, this whole piece here needs to be painted white for you to start. And then I can put the wood effects on. I know why they've done it all black. It's because if you don't want to paint this and you just want to build it, it'll look quite nice if you've got a black hole, white deck and fittings, and then you've got orange masks and everything. It just looks, you know, it'll look great. And you wouldn't have had to put a paintbrush to it at all. But we're going to paint that. Yeah, she's going to be like a Michelangelo. Yeah. <laughs> Stop doing the very bad Italian accent, Harry. Yeah, I can't help it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh dear, there goes all my Italian audience. I don't think any Italians watch my channel. If you're Italian and you're actually watching this, can you put something in the comments like, you dickhead? Okay, that'll be fine. Just let me know you're out there. Now, there's not much flash on this. That's what I noticed the other one, but there's a tiny bit there. Look, that's it. That's all I've seen. And that is gone with two flicks of the uh, fingernail. Well, nearly. It will be gone. There we go. It's gone. <laughs> um, like the Nipple Maru, the kit was pretty well flash-free. And it was very easy to work on. Even things like, you know, the davits are very clean and clear. It's, I mean, it's a 1350 scale, so that's the same as the battleships that I built, all right? So a lot of those things are all the same size. And I'm used to working with that. We just, with wood ships normally, because they're rather small compared to these huge battleships, you get larger scale kits. It's just how it goes. Uh, the rest of the white is, again, another little bit of flesh. It seems that the tip of that um, that little uh, lifeboat wants to have some flesh, but really, there, there's so little flesh, it'll take seconds to clean up. The parts are just beautiful. They're simple. It's a very simple kit. I mean, we could spend a lot of time doing scratch on this. The only scratch I did on the um, 
Nippon Maru is I added some railings to the bridge because I noticed in the photos there are all these railings on the bridge and we didn't have any. So I had some railings, a 1350, so I put them on there and painted them white. Yeah, I might even find a pick. And that's about the only thing I did. Apart from that, she was pretty well out of the box. Oh, I did change the um, the the flagpole at the stern. I put a brass rod in because it's stronger and then attach the flag because my experience always with plastic ones is they're too fat and they usually break. Whereas if you put a brass rod in, she's not going nowhere. All right. That's a double negative, Harry. She won't be going anywhere. Yeah, that's better. Now, your masts and your yards are all orange which is horrible that cannot be the right color i kind of left it that way on the nippon maru because in, she was painted up with a white hull and orange uh, basically mask at one stage so it's kind of okay but i think for this one she um she doesn't look that like that in the photos no we'll um we'll investigate that and i'm sure there's a it should be white or black or something we'll, we'll see we'll see you could do your own research at home and let me know harry it should be aquamarine. Yes, that's what it should be. You let me know. That'll be fine. Although you should do it in Italian action. Eh, brago. <laughs> dear, 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 dear. I'm going to lose some subscribers over this one. Ah, bugger them. They can't take a joke at Christmas time. Goodness me. What have the Romans ever done for us? <laughs> Oops. Oh, dear. Okay, well, look. That is a brief journey through the kit. And as I said, there's really not much to it. I mean, we'll have another quick look at the instructions. You get some photos, middle there in black and white. You get um, a whole business here telling you about the history of it. That's, that's rather good. You get the rigging diagram, which they've put out, which, you know, that's pretty good. Looks pretty spot on, actually. And that's about the level of rigging that I did for the um, Nepal Maru. Although I cheated with the rat lines. I have photo etch rat lines in 1350 that I bought to use in a couple of my old World War I cruisers. And then I ended up buying photo etch sets for them that had the rat lines in them for those various cruises. So I actually have a whole set of various sizes for um, rat lines in 1350. So we might do that trick again because it's a very easy solution. And you still run basically all your stays and everything as I did. And you know, and you, you run your foot hooks and, and, and well, you know, foot ropes, not your foot hooks. Your foot hooks will be tiny. We'll be running there. Uh, a foot hook is uh, when the rat lines go up, right? They go to a point, and of course, at the point, the poor old sailors can't get their feet in, and they, they couldn't do this last scramble to get up inside the little fighting platform or a crow's nest. So what you've got is they, the rat lines go so far, and then when they get to the absolute narrowest point for foot, they have another set of ropes come out, go up the side and around the fighting platform. That's called a foot hook, right? So, you know, you're going up there, and they go, Ah, foot hook, I can't get up. <laughs> Oops. So yeah, procedure for building this is so easy. Build your masts, put your bloody greebles on your deck, right? Okay, put up your, your basically your stern house, not a problem. Sort of would have been a bridge in the old days, but these days your stern house. You've got a little crane there, which you can sort of play with. Okay, and then you've got some more stuff to put on the deck here. Whack your bow spread in. Um, then here, they're already suggesting to you to put in some of your rigging lines. And that's rather good, isn't it? Because like the um, like the Nepal Maru, it actually had holes in the deck to run the lines. So you could do pretend rat lines. They were sort of, they were reduced in number and they're actually coming out of the deck instead of coming from the side, which is where they should be. Uh, you've got your lifeboats that go on through the davits. And then basically you've, you've got your masts in well, that stage there. So here on stage six, you're putting in your um, yards. And that's it. And they suggest, you know, put a little bit of a, Put a little bit of a kink on it. Make it a bit kinky. Yeah. Go on. Flash right out and have some fun and make it kinky. Then, um, oh, actually, they've got, well, this is a bit wrong because you really should be, oh, it's rope pulling. You really should be putting in your forward stays um, pretty well early and then your backward stays and then your, your rat lines. Oh, yeah, look, you know, it, the little kit like this, it doesn't really matter, but um, they show you there. Don't leave it all wonky. Have it nice and tight. Yeah. Everybody likes it tight. They do. And then there's how you put the pedestals in. And it's a really good idea to cement those in. Not leave it all loose and wobbly. And the propeller, they call it. The screw. Yeah, prop screws. And the flags. Oh, sorry. The sails. They're a bit awful. I don't like plastic sails. I really don't, you know. Anyhow, give one. We'll cross that bridge we come to it. But I think this is 
a great fun little build. And I usually like to do something kind of simple over the Christmas New Year break. So I take a break from my big kits and I do something little and fun. And this is the one that I'm going to do. So I go sit outside the veranda and I'm not too worried. I'm, I'm not trying to win any competitions. I'll just have fun. And that is what modeling is all about. This is the essence of it. So, you know, I know you guys, some of you say, oh, I built a Tamiya kit to mojo back. Well, I would build something like this to get my mojo back because this really does it for me. Oh, sure, I'll spend a month of uh, rigging afterwards. Yeah, but just to build it, it's kind of fun. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that. This um, probably won't come up for a while because I'll just pot around with it. I might show you the progress after a week or two, just show you it built up before I do the rigging. I won't do rigging videos on this because it's so tiny. I'll just rig it up and show you how it's all done later on. But look, these kind of kits, and they were MA kits, right? MA builds, beautiful ship kits. And then Aoshima reboxed them, and now Lee out of China is reboxing them again. But they have not lost any of their charm. They are fantastic. Okay, that's all I've got to say. So it's goodbye from Australia, and it's hooroo from Harry and Annie.